Have you recently ghosted your email list? This is a safe space, you can tell me. Listen, it happens. You need to get back on track and start emailing your list regularly again. You skipped one week, then three, then two weeks pass, then a couple months, and you're not sure exactly how to slide back into inboxes. In this video, I am gonna tell you how to resurrect your email marketing efforts and get back on track. Let's create a three-part email sequence series that is going to get that click. If we haven't met yet, hello, my name is Ashlyn Carter. I'm a conversion copywriter for creative entrepreneurs like you. And while you're here, you must score my 42 email subject line swipe files. Look down below, it's in the description box, a freebie for you. While you're down there, click that like button, that helps me out, and let's get going. Okay, the number one tip is I want to use a clean and organized three-part sequence or funnel, which I'm gonna call these really silly descriptors, you'll see why. Number one, the not cousin Eddie. Number two, the Oprah, and number three, the Gatsby email. Okay, here is my overall philosophy on emailing your list if it has been a while. Don't make it weird. Picture Christmas Vacation. If you've seen the movie, then you know Cousin Eddie. He's the weird comedic relief uncle character in the movie. He barges in, a little bit tipsy, causes all sorts of ruckus, eyebrows raised. He leaves the family wondering, who is this guy? How are we related again? I don't want you to be that, zooming back into inboxes, making it weird, giving them the feeling of, when did I sign up for this person's emails? So the solution, we're gonna come against that by the not Cousin Eddie. That's a very quick who I am again email. We're gonna give them some killer value and give them an out if they're really not interested. Number two, the Oprah email. We're gonna give them your absolute best, things that you're consuming lately, tools that you're loving. It's like inviting them to come and sit on the couch with you for a minute. And then number three, the Gatsby. We're gonna toast to them, give them a free invitation, a coupon code, free shipping, something to express your gratitude for them they stuck with you. Okay, now you know the three emails that I want you to have in the sequence. My next tip is number two, I want you to keep your explanation short and sweet. So basically we don't wanna over explain why you've been MIA. And I'm gonna give you a copy swipe for this. The other week I was at my friend Amber's event, Bloom and Grow Live, and I was um, leading a round table discussion. People were coming up to my table and asking all sorts of copywriting questions. And this one came up a lot, which is why I was excited to make a video about it. What I told them is in this campaign, in this sequence, you don't want to over explain and apologize for why you've been MIA. We've got to flip things and help them understand what's the value for them. That's like rule number one in copywriting is everybody's reading things thinking, okay, but what's in this for me? So like I said, I want to give you a little copy swipe template that you can use. This is about how long this should be. You'll see it's pretty short and sweet. This is the copy party starter. I'll put up over here on the side. If you're a service provider, a great way that you can frame this is these are some of the tools and resources that you've created for your clients, you wanted to bring them to your subscribers as well. And so judge them, change them a little bit because they're not deliverables, but you can give them those kind of tools. Maybe give them a VIP seat, let them understand what it would be like to be a client of yours. This can also subtly seed. People do pay you for what you do. But in this email, our overall goal is not being weird and we just want to come in with lots of value and remind them why you're there. I also recommend letting them know you're gonna be offering up some kind of sweet deal or offer, like extending a friendship bracelet to them in the coming days. And I would absolutely remind them what they signed up to hear from you about. So you're the what girl or guy for them. You may also need to include a PS in this email that points them back to their original freebie or download or opt-in that they used to get on this list if it's been a while. Overall here, keep that copy minimal because the goal is for them to actually use the resources and the tools that you're sending along. Tip number three, make unsubscribing super duper obvious. If unsubscribing is hard to find, that will just tick people off. You will not be making any friends that way. It definitely needs to be in the footer copy of any email that you send out to adhere to can spam law. But I found in an email sequence like this, when it's been a minute, it can even be that much more of an olive branch extension if you put it right there in the body copy of the email saying, if you don't wanna hear from me anymore, click here to unsubscribe, same link as the one in the footer. Okay, so you know the three-part sequence that we're talking through here. You have that first email short and sweet with a roundup of useful tools or content that you've created. You've made that unsubscribe link very clear for them. That brings me to the next tip. Number four, we're talking about emails two and three in this series more gifts, more presents. Like Oprah invites people to come sit on her couch or like she did when the TV show was on. That's what we're doing in email two. It's a little bit more intimate. Make sure in this email they've definitely connected the dots and understand at this point, 
who you are and why they first started subscribing to you. And then the rest of the email, just share really valuable tools, resources you've enjoyed lately or tools or things that are on your desk right now. You can mix your stuff in there, but think about it. That first email, you are shilling your links and content that you've created. And then the last email of the series, we're gonna be doing that too. So here is your break to talk up other businesses or tools on your desk. Yes, you can throw in some links to things that you have done, but we want to help reinforce the idea that you just share killer content. You don't care where it comes from. You're going to be valuable in their inbox no matter what. There is a section in Anne Hanley's weekly Fortnite email that I love. She just shares stuff she's enjoying and it is always helpful for me. She's a writer. I'm a writer. That's why I'm on her list. But that's what I mean. I'm going to put up a little example of a recent email from her, but this is the kind of content I'm talking about. So valuable. Then for the final email, like I said, you're going to get back in the saddle of selling your own stuff or reminding them that you do what you do for a price. I'm calling it the Gatsby though, because we're essentially channeling this GIF and I want you to just serve it up complimentary. Maybe you want to do that with a coupon code or free shipping. You want to invite them to a masterclass or something completely on the house or give them a massive discount to one of your products. We're really trying to soften the blow of completely ghosting them for a while. Now we're trying to slide back in with regular content. And there you go. Those three emails have reminded them of what you do and what your value is. And now you can add them back onto your regular weekly or bi-weekly or monthly newsletter campaign, but here is the kicker. You can't forget again. You've already forgotten once, so don't do it twice. They will lose trust with you. Tip number five, don't worry about unsubscribes. You are going to get unsubscribes on a campaign like this. If you get weird about that number, then reframe it in your head. No, it doesn't always mean people hate you. It may just mean they're in a different stage in their customer or client life cycle than they were when they first signed up for emails from you. Maybe they needed your content at that time in their life and they are just not there anymore. They're in a different phase and they don't need this type of value and content in their lives. That's okay. I talk about cleaning up your list a lot. Otherwise it's just dead weight. So it's okay. I meant it when I said you need to actually keep showing up though, if you do this once, because we want them to now trust you that you've said you're going to show up and you're going to show up. So be sure to watch this video that I have right here. I'll link it down in the description box. I'm taking you through an entire year's worth of email marketing ideas you can use. Okay. There you go. Put on your best pump up jam, crank out this series, or just swipe from the copy bar shop. Our template for this, you can judge it for your own business and your own brand voice. Bottom line, don't worry if it's been a hot minute since you've sent out an email newsletter to your email list. Follow this tips and strategies I taught through in today's video to win back that click from your audience. If you found this video helpful, then hit that thumbs up button, comment below with any questions that you may have as well. And if you need help analyzing your email metrics after you get this campaign out, be sure to watch the next video I've got teed up for you on this screen.